Welcome. Uh, this is my CIGAR 2020 presentation for our full paper, Policy Aware Unbiased Learning to Rank for Top K Rankings. My name is Harry Oosterhuis. This is joint work together with Professor Maarten de Gijken. We're going to jump straight into the main contributions. We've introduced a new Policy Aware Estimator for Counterfactual Learning to Rank. The problem we address is item selection bias, which happens in Top K uh, ranking scenarios. And our new estimator can correct for this bias, whereas previous methods couldn't, if there is a stochastic logging policy. The other main contribution is that we looked at loss functions for top K ranking for counterfactual learning to rank. And we've shown that it's quite straightforwardly, you, you can adapt the state-of-the-art supervised learning to rank method lambda loss to optimize the counterfactual loss. Let me now in detail describe what I, what I just uh, talked about. Uh, and we'll start with top K ranking. I assume a lot of you are already familiar, familiar with what top K ranking is, uh, but it's a specific scenario where you have a ranking system that has, is ranking more items than it can display. So here we have five items, where, but only four items are displayed to the user. So there's one item that is not shown to the user at all, the user can't see it. This is very common in search and recommendation. And for this paper, we want to optimize such a model based on interactions with such a system. So first, some background. So counterfactual learning to rank is a family of methods or an approach, you might say, a field uh, where we have methods that learn from historically logged user clicks. So clicks gathered in the past that you now have to optimize the system from. The problem, of course, is that clicks are biased indicators of preference. And the existing solution is to weight these clicks to correct for this bias. So we're focusing mainly on position bias or an extreme version of position bias. Position bias occurs because not every, every user examines every item that you show them. Here we see an eye tracking study from over a decade ago where people were shown a result page and based on their eye movements, we know that on average in this scenario, 100% of people looked at the first two items, but only 50% of people looked at item eight. So these people don't know what item is in position eight, but still half of them didn't look there. You can imagine that this will have a really large effect on the interactions you see, if you're going to learn from those interactions. This position bias, the order in which you showed items during logging, will have an effect on your optimization which is not something that you want. You only want the relevance to matter, of course. The trick here is to first decompose the click probability. So the probability of a click on an item given a displayed ranking R, so the ranking we showed to the user, we first have a probability that someone is going to examine this item. Usually this is based or modeled on the rank. So per rank, you have a different probability of examination, someone looking at that item and a probability of preference or relevance, which is the probability that someone will click given that they've already examined it. So, you, uh, so first the user is going to look at an item or not, depending on where you show it. The user doesn't know what the item is, so that can't affect their behavior. Once they see the item, they can consider whether to click on it or not. And we want to correct for this first examination probability because that is not related to the relevance of the item. The existing idea is to use inverse propensity scoring. So if you have a large number of interactions, let's say we showed a ranking n times, the main idea behind this method, so it's more complicated than this, but this is the main intuition behind it, is that you can get the relevance if you approximate a weighted average over these clicks. So for and what you do here is each click, you inversely weigh it to the examination probability. So you divide it by how likely were people to look at this item the way that we displayed it. This means that items that are more likely to be displayed get, get a lower weight than items that are, very, that are unlikely to be uh, examined. We're basically dividing away this M examination probability and expectation. I'll give you an idea um, let's say that we have this, this ranking setting with five items. There's different examination probabilities per rank. 
So I click on item three, on rank three, where 50% of people examine the position, will be weighted twice, because it will be weighted by one divided by 0 0.5. And this corrects for the 50% of the people that probably didn't even look at this position. Now, this is unbiased, as long as you can show every item in the ranking. And this is exactly where item selection bias comes, the problem that we're addressing in this paper. When you have top K, uh, top K ranking setting, there are items which have a 0% chance of being examined. For instance, item five in this example on screen. There are no clicks on item five that you can reweigh because no one can click on item five because it's not on screen. They can't even examine it. As a result, the previous approach is no longer unbiased. Um, and this is a problem, of course, because it means you can't apply this method unbiased. Well, if you apply this method in a top K ranking setting, you're introducing some bias. This is what we call item selection bias. The way that we solve this bias is by introducing a new estimator, which we call the policy aware estimator. The reason we call it the policy aware estimator is because it takes into account the effect of a stochastic logging policy. So let's say there's a logging policy pi that was used to rank to sh the items during logging. And pi is stochastic, so there's some randomization. So there's different rankings that could be displayed with a different probability, so we have a distribution there. We can, the intuition behind this estimator is that we can also define the click probability conditioned on the policy. So now we have the policy here instead of the ranking that was actually displayed. And this basically turns into an expectation. So we sum over all the rankings that the policy could have shown, take the probability of the, that the policy would display this ranking. So based, this is based on the policy. Then the probability that it's examined, given that this was the ranking that was displayed. So this is based on the user behavior, on their position bias, times the relevance probability, the probability that someone will click on it given that they examined it. So this is a generalization of the previous model that we had that now takes into account the effect of the policy as well. It's a very simple extension. If the policy is deterministic, we'll have the same probability as we had before. The estimator now weights according to the examination probability conditioned on the policy. So over here conditioned on the policy not on the individual ranking. This basically means that the denominator is a summation of all the rankings that the policy could display and the, the probability uh, of examination in those rankings. So this is a simple generalization of the estimator we've seen before. Again, if the policy is deterministic, they're equivalent. So it's really a generalization. The nice thing here is that this estimator is unbiased if every item has a non-zero chance of being displayed. So if this probability down here that we divide by is positive for every item, we're guaranteed to have an unbiased estimator, which is a really nice probability because that's quite doable. Um, in a top K ranking, you can never show more than uh, K items, but you can give more than K items the probability of being displayed in the top K. Let me give you an example. Again, we have top four ranking, but we have five items. But now we have a policy that can show two rankings, either the ranking one, two, three, four, five, where five is not displayed, or one, two, three, five, where four is not displayed. And there's an 80% chance of the first ranking and a 20% on the second. The trick here is that if you have a click on item five, for instance, we take into account both the policy probability and the examination probability. So the probability that someone examines item five based on the policy is first 20% probability that the item is displayed at all, then a 40% probability that the item is examined in the rank that it's displayed, which gives us a 8% probability. One divided by 0 0.08 is 12 and a half. So we have this click will get a weight of 12 and a half, which is much larger than if you only uh, base it on the examination probability because it takes into account the probability that this item would not have been displayed. That's the main idea. It's a straightforward extension of the previous estimator, but it's really effective because now we can learn in a top K ranking setting. The other part, I'm going to be very quick here because uh, we don't have that much time. If you're interested in these ranking losses, 
look at the paper, uh, but we looked at uh, existing ranking losses and see if they could be adapted for top K ranking in the counterfactual setting. We found this is possible for a lot of state-of-the-art losses. In particular, Lambda Mart uh, seems to do very well. Uh, we, the adaptions are straightforward. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on it here, but the main idea is that we now have the state-of-the-art supervised method working in the counterfactual setting. And this shows us that there doesn't need to be a division between these two areas. We don't need separate ranking losses for, or ranking approaches for supervised learning to rank as for counter learning to rank per se. It seems that this could be one, one area that isn't divided. Of course, we did some experiments. What we've done is semi-synthetic experiments. Our queries and documents are from commercial learning to rank data sets. We have an existing ranker that's good but not optimal, and it shows rankings either with randomization or without randomization, let's start there, where we just take the top k items, or with randomization, where we take the top k minus one, and the last item is randomly sampled from whatever is remaining. This means every item has a chance of appearing in the top k. All the results I'm showing you are based on uh, 100 million simulated clicks. We simulate them with noise and, and position bias, so that it, it's a bias signal. Uh, each point in the graph, not each line, is based on 100 million simulated clicks. All right, let's look at the results. We have the average relevant position, the number of display positions. So we vary the amount of item selection bias here. The small number of positions, high amount of bias. Uh, a lot of positions, low amount of bias, because you can show most of the items. Average relevant position, the lower the better. Production ranker is up here. The optimal ranking is this dotted line down here. And we see in red, the policy where estimator is very close to optimal. There is some noise, of course, so it, it seems to, uh, maybe it needs more clicks to, to be perfect in this scenario, but it's very close to optimal, whereas all of the baseline methods are very much affected by this bias. We see they don't get close to optimal, even if you show 80 items at once. To be clear, some of these estimators are based on randomized data. So the same randomized data that the policy where estimator is based on. So it's not that you can just randomize some of the rankings and this problem is solved. You need to randomize your rankings and you need to take into account the effect of that randomization in your estimator. That's what the policy aware estimator does. And it doesn't seem to be affected by the amount of item selection bias very much, maybe even not at all. Similar graph, now we have NHG, the higher the better, production ranker down here, the dotted line up here is the optimal model. We know what the optimal model is in the simulation. And the policy aware estimator, again, very, very closely, even more closely than the previous example, approximates the optimal ranking model, regardless of how many display positions there are. So the, the, item, the, the degree of item selection bias seems to have no effect on this estimator at all, which is very good because it indicates it's unbiased with respect to this bias. All right, before I conclude this talk, I want to give a shout out to some uh, recent existing work. The first is Correcting for Election Bias in Learning to Rank Systems, a WWW 2020 paper published in April, a couple months ago. Uh, they also have a way of dealing with this bias. Unfortunately, the work is so recent that we couldn't compare it. It was published after this was already submitted, but I wanted to give them a shout out. The other one is Addressing Trust Bias for Unbiased Learning to Rank. Uh, this paper is from last year. They're the first that mentioned the possibility of using lambda loss for counterfactual learning to rank, but they didn't show how it's done. Still, I want to give them a shout out for mentioning that. All right, to conclude. Existing counterfactual learning to rank methods are very much affected by item selection bias. Uh, so they can't really, if you apply them to top K ranking scenarios, they're bound to be biased. We introduced a new estimator that can deal with this bias, but it needs some randomization. The trick is it takes into account the effect of randomization to correct for it. Finally, we've also looked at lambda loss and shown that it's very straightforward to adapt it to uh, work for counterfactual learning to rank, meaning that supervised learning to rank and counterfactual learning to rank don't need to be uh, different areas. All right, thank you very much.